Hi! Welcome to my tutorial. We'll spend the next 30 minutes working on Corn Paint 2018. Let's get started! Welcome to Demo Painting in Newest Coral Painter 2018. I will try to do my best to explain all steps and processes how I work in Painter using oil brushes. I start with canvas that are more or less the size of A4 paper, with 300 dpi. I make it so I can have a good resolution later for printing. You never know, maybe I will like it enough to print it and hang it on the wall. Mm, and A4 with 300 dpi is enough to rescale it even to A3 and still have a quite good quality. It's about 2500 to 3500 pixels width and height. When um, you are setting your canvas in pixels then you can ignore uh, dpi. The dpi is a parameter only for printing. The Coral Painter 2018 have a new library of brushes that are organized in a way that any beginner, especially someone coming from traditional to digital, will have no problem to getting around. Um, it's called Natural Media Brushes and the tools are arranged by medium. Uh, very handy. I will grab from here a soft B pencil to start, start with my thumbnails. So when it comes to the painting, I really love storytelling. Even if they are, the composition is very easy and the image overall is very uh, not complicated, I create a whole background story for characters and the landscapes I am doing. Um, and here for the topic I took uh, uh, folk legends uh, from Poland about a demon girl. Uh, she was a ghost uh, of a girl who died on her wedding day and was hunting, hunting farmers in the hot summer noons while they were working in the fields. She was the explanation for a heat stroke. So if you were working in the middle of the day in the field and you got a heat stroke, it was because uh, of her doing. I really love the folk legends because when I was a kid I was sent to a summer vacation to my grandmother to the countryside and she was a very gifted storyteller. Uh, all her grandchilds loved her scary stories about ghosts and devils and it really in, uh, influenced my work. It's uh, very important for me as an illustrator and a concept artist to put on paper my own experiences. And just like most popular tip for a writer is to write what you know, I paint what I know and what is close to my heart. I spend about 20 minutes for those sketches. Uh, this is a stage of painting before I look for any photo references. I tried out few composition and gestures, uh, I have more or less clear idea uh, how I want to have it. I just try out few slight changes. Uh, does it look better as a portrait? Should camera be from top or bottom? Should the head be straightened or a little bit tilt? I really don't rush it. It's my way to put on paper all bad ideas and the good one will pop up as a fifth or tenth uh, sketch. Um, here I catch it quite early and I was sure I can go with it. Uh, so the next stage is the color thumbnail. I also had a clear idea which color and contrast I want to use. Uh, I right now do it pretty intuitive, uh, but if uh, I wouldn't have this idea so clear, I would try to much different approaches in value and colors to really find the one that works the best. But here uh, I have the story that the girl is walking through the gold fields and there is a storm coming. So I have good contrast of the dark clouds uh, for a background for her head and a blonde hair and the uh, traditional wedding costume is dark, uh, so it also creates great contrast with the uh, light uh, cornfields. I plan it all in the thumbnails and I also think about grouping darks and lights. The composition here is quite simple, really the values. I use just two values, darks and uh, something dark and the light one. And here comes the next amazing feature of Painter, Colorset Library and Mixer. Colorset Library consists of a prepared uh, set of colors that are uh, similar to the pigments that I would normally use in traditional media. And the mixer is just the palette. It's a color palette that you would mix color on. Mm, to create a good harmonious colors, 
I want to limit my palette and I want to pick just a, a very specific pigments that I am used to work in traditional media. You can change the view of the color li library to bigger icon or a list of names. Uh, I'm picking cadmium yellow, cadmium scarlet, French ultramarine and perilne black that have a little bit warmer tones and it's not black black. I want to completely avoid using 100% black on my picture. Um, I just wanted to have a little bit of uh, hue and color in it. Uh, so when I will uh, use it to darken the other colors, it will not desaturate them. As you see, I picked shades of yellow, red and blue. So traditional primary colors. Now I mix a secondary color, so orange, green and violet. And green and violet would be uh, the colors that are very dimmed in this color palette thanks to the primaries that I picked first. So that's my limited palette that I want to go with. And that's exactly what I need. I already decided on the thumbnail that I want to work mostly with the warm yellows and oranges and blues will come only as grayish colors. So the next step is to create oil library from Mixer by clicking on setting icons in window color library. Here you can choose to create new library from a mixer. At any stage you can rearrange library by hue, saturation and value. I really love this feature. It helps me a lot in controlling what color I use on canvas and in comparing colors. With the color sketch ready, I can start working on the final picture. I rescale the sketch to full size and I can start working out the first colors. I don't like to start with white canvas, so I will fill it with any of the color and grab one of the oil brushes, here top red oils, and start working the first shapes. Uh, you can really see the beauty of the painter here. All of those amazing color changes you can see coming out in every brush stroke that is specific for painter. Many of their, their tools uh, work in traditional like way. They have this touch of unpredictability in how the color are mixed or how the texture works. This is really something amazing. I absolutely love it. And that that's removes completely the digital look from your art. Mm, what I also take into consideration is the brush size, uh, because when I uh, imagine this canvas in the real life, I, uh, there is a specific size of the brushes that I will use and some are not achievable. Uh, I will not have a huge brush to paint the whole canvas uh, as long as I am not using brushes from the Home Depot to paint walls. And uh, I try to think about it, how big and how small compared to the whole canvas brushes are to really um, have this realism consistent. The sketch is really messy, uh, so I decided to make a clearer version of it, but didn't spend much time on it. Uh, I think that uh, even if I would spend a lot of time on doing the sketch perfect, I would not use it fully in the painting and it's sometimes easier for me to just jump into paint and I will skip the sketch or just keep it very raw as it is here. Uh, I will just uh, suggest the shapes uh, so I have the idea where the specific shapes of color should go but nothing in details. Let's talk about brushes that I am using. Coral Painter have gigantic library of brushes and it's easy to get lost. But if you're coming from traditional background, the brushes description makes a lot of sense and you can predict how they will work. If you don't know what's the difference between the fan brush and short brush or palette knife and what is glazing, find uh, some good book on traditional painting and read it. Uh, your digital art will only be enriched by understanding the, those terms. Inside brush library for 2018, you can find all traditional mediums, from acrylics, gouaches, watercolors, that works amazing by the way. I have on my YouTube channel short video comparing a scanned watercolor to one created in Coral Painter and it's really hard to spot a difference. Great! Uh, back on track, uh, there are airbrushes, pastels, pencils, but also particle brushes, special effects, uh, I can name many, many more, but you get the picture. Um, I extremely like to use oils. There are two groups that I use mainly, and those are artists' oils and the other name just oils. 
I will try to name those I am using with the video later. Mm, the third group uh, that I will uh, use are blenders and here my three favorites are fractured uh, blender, uh, particle spring soft blend and stencil oil blender. In, 2000, in Painter 2018 there is a new group called Sargent. You might remember already existing in previous version Sargent Brush from Artist Favorites category and now Sargent have his own category with four new brushes and I very very much like them. And the last group of brushes uh, you see me using are Skip Allen's brushes uh, named uh, Butterly Oils. Those are the brushes created by Skip Allen and you can download them from his blog for free. Thank you Allen for all your hard work on videos and brushes. Really, really great work. Don't be under the impression that I paint all of this from the memory. Right now in the video in the bottom right corner you can see screenshot of my second monitor that I usually fill up with the photo references. To organize them I use a smaller free software called Quadro. It allows you to load pictures as a floating windows and that you can arrange however you like. So I have photos of the stormy skies, gold fields, many faces, one would be a reference for an eyes, other for nose, um, next for color and lighting. Uh, I take bits from so many references that the final image have no similarity to any of the photos and I think that's a proper way of using references in your work. Uh, if I want a very specific reference for anatomy or dra drapery I will take photo of myself or friend. I feel pretty good at painting hands because I will copy hand from my own photo with no second thought. I own rights to my own hand and I own rights to photo of uh, my own hand so there is no licensing issue. I want to see the full picture in my working area so I work on this zoom out. Uh, it helps me to focus on a whole composition instead of on, on just small details. Working from the big shapes to small shapes using just big brush. I will eventually zoom in to work on an important areas of the picture, but not until I mm, I'm happy with the color and the values on the rest of the image. It helps a lot. I draw on the big Cintiq. I work on a Wacom Cintiq 24 HD, and the screen and resolution is big enough. I can work on a full size version of a picture comfortable. I also have a navigation window uh, placed on my second screen to again have a better idea how the picture comes out as a whole composition. The worst what I can do is to start mindlessly doodling details in some spot that is not even important for the storytelling and in result I will, it will grab unnecessary attention. It's much better to polish only uh, the selling points of the picture. For sure I need to focus on the face and make it look the best. It's just one character in the picture and the face will be the first spot everyone would look at. Uh, I will spend a lot of time on rendering it. You will see me flipping the canvas very often uh, while I am painting. It uh, helps me to refresh my eyes and quickly spot all distortions. Everyone have a tendency to skew drawing to one side, left or right, and I do too. So to avoid it, I will flip the image many times. Uh, I eventually forget what's the correct side that I started with. I have the shortcut for flipping the canvas horizontally assigned to my own screen menu. Uh, it's that black box with the edge buttons you can see on my screen. Uh, it comes with the Wacom drivers. There is an additional tab uh, in the Wacom properties uh, called on-screen menu and you can uh, create your own set uh, of the menu and it will look like that. <coughs> Wacom Cintiq is great for size but it blocks my access to keyboard completely. I do assign all the bi basics shortcuts to buttons on the frame of Cintiq and the rest uh, I will assign to this on-screen menu. So 
So you can see right now in my painting, I overpainted the face and I am starting over. And why? Uh, I wasn't happy with it. Uh, I know that I already put a lot of effort and time in polishing it. And unfortunately, uh, because of polishing it a little bit too far, I lost the painterly look that I wanted to achieve. And even if it was looking good, it wasn't up to my liking. Uh, that uh, what is was very hard for me to learn was this to just let it go, to start over, and uh, never stop on the just good enough. Uh, try to really push it further. If you think that you can achieve much better eff effects uh, in one area, don't be afraid of overpainting it and start. Uh, everything from the beginning. I slowed down time to actual so you can see the real brush strokes that I am doing. I'm working right now with a brush a real clumsy wet flat 2 and it's from category oils. Mm, I really liked it for creating soft edged rendering. I use in my work additional Wacom pen called Art Pen. Besides pen pressure and angle detection, it also recognizes rotation of the pen, and this really unlocks the full potential of oil brushes in Painter. Uh, the pen looks strange because I mounted on it white grip, uh, the rubber part. Uh, I get cramps in my palm from the standard grip uh, because I squeeze the pen too hard while painting. Uh, so um, yeah, it looks different than that it would look normally straight from the shop. Uh, you can get them in the Wacom store. So when you look now at the video, you can really see how slow I work. I try to make every brush stroke count. I will paint it, and do it, paint it again, and do it, and paint it again, until it looks well placed. It gives the feeling of effortless. Painting in oils is all about the observing reality, and my favorite painters have pictures consisting really 10 brush strokes, and that describes all what is needed to read the picture. I would love to achieve similar results, and I use opportunity that digital art gives me to undo and redo every brush stroke. I try to not spend too much time in just one spot. I like when the whole picture develops evenly. When you look at how I paint face, I will jump from eyes to lips to nose and back to lips to keep the whole area consistent in rendering. Uh, so I will not uh, over render one spot, but rather work on a whole face as a one. The Polish name for the character I paint now is Powodnica, translate to English Nun Rat. I try to work with topics that are close to me or I experienced in some way. Beside the most common version of it, what is a fan art? <laughs> of course, how could I not draw characters from my favorite games and movies? But books and radio shows can inspire me very much. Even more simple situations like meeting random people on the street or visiting new place is full of experience that I can translate later into my designs and paintings. If you think that you are missing visual a library because you never traveled into exotic lands and you never visited famous cities, don't think all is lost. I personally did not travel much in my life. I spent first 18 years of my life in one area uh, and I only know Gothic cities and European forests and Caucasian people. But the real gems are in details. In that guy who sold you bread in bakery yesterday and that tree you saw last weekend from the car window. Because the most important aspect of any design is readability. And readability comes from using accepted and known symbols. You know desert and pyramids only from movies? Don't worry, so do 80% of the population. Or Aztec ruins in rainforest jungle? Sometimes the authentic, authentic photography say less than a picture painted by someone who all his life lived in two-room apartment. Because photography do not operate with the symbols commonly known and accepted by the most of the population. 
you want to follow the best rule of the good design and that is add something new to something what is already known. And I do believe that you can find the aspect of something new in your daily boring but not so boring life. You just need to change the way you look around at your surrounding. You can see in the layer window that I have three layers and actually I paint only on the, just one of them. I know it's kind of risky but it's a personal piece and I know nobody will ask me to change the color of specific element or move something 100 pixels left. <laughs> it's possible to paint in Painter all multiple layers and brushes will pick and blend colors from the layer below. There's a special button in layer window, second after preserve transparency and it's called under pick up underlying color and that triggers the blending with existing colors. So it's just my laziness that I paint everything on just one layer. My first layer is a sketch and I keep it just to compare it to the whole picture. A second is a layer filled with black and mode set to color. I unhide it uh, only to check the value of the picture, uh, not to lose the sense of the contrast I had in my value sketch. You saw me already when I painted the sky. After adding details, I darkened the highlights to make sure it groups together, uh, as well as hair. Uh, logically, there should be more shadows in them, but I decided to put more highlights to keep the contrast between the sky and the hair. While I am painting a hand, I can show you the reference photo I used for it. I mentioned it earlier, in occasion like that I would prepare my own photo. Uh, you can see me here holding a broomstick. Uh, the light isn't exactly the same, so I had to change the light direction a bit. And uh, understanding the dimensionality and anatomy of a hand helps, uh, but overall I will just copy the whole photo quite carefully and nobody would know if I did not told you. So if you have any regrets for using references, you should not feel guilty. This is pretty common technique and if you consider all time masters or how many tools there is helping to copy reality when you paint traditionally, what is wrong with copying a photo? Any way that gives you a good result is a way worth taking.
I am raising the contrast here using Equalize from Dynamic Plugins. It works pretty similar to level adjustment from Photoshop. I will slide both shadows and lights to the middle, making the picture more contrasty. I would do it at the very end of the picture uh, and every work coming after it is uh, just small fixes. I squint eyes looking for areas that stick out and uh, here I noticed that the shape of hair is quite symmetrical with uh, lines on both sides curving upward. Uh, so I raise some of the hair string and repaint them, making the flow of a line read better. Uh, overall, when you watch any demo painting, almost always the rule of 80-20 applies. In the first 20% of time I get 80% of the image done, and the rest of 80% time I render small details that will not affect the whole picture much. It's, uh, it for sure applies for my work. I try to not work on detail I, until the full image looks done in 80%. Then I am sure when I zoom in and uh, start adding small nuances, the whole picture still will hold up. I finished the painting. Here's the final result. I intentionally left it very raw at some places, where you can see all those amazing transitions of textures and colors coming from using Color Painter. Thank you very much for watching. You can follow me up on ArtStation under the name Magda Proski. See you next time!